Our gospel story today is about two daughters, but we don't know at the beginning that they are both daughters. I'll back up a little. When I was growing up in Chilliwack, my father was an elementary school principal. One of the things that I thought was most wonderful about what my dad did for a living was that he got a lot of chocolates. At, as a probably quite beloved principal, at Christmas and at the end of June, he came home with boxes and boxes of chocolates. In the late 60s, maybe early 70s, my favorites were the box of Moyer's Pot of Gold. I loved the chocolates, but I was also fascinated by the box. The box had a picture of a woman with pearls and, and nicely done hair holding a box of Moyer's Pot of Gold. And of course, that box also had a picture of the lady with pearls holding a box of Pot of Gold. So there was this fascinating and, and almost disturbing sense of infinity that if only I could look hard enough and maybe use a magnifying glass, each box would have a hidden picture of another box which would have a picture of another box. Mark loves to do something with wrapped, stories wrapped around stories. So I'm first going to look at the box, the frame story, and then we'll look at the hidden story. So the frame story, Jesus is beside the lake with his disciples and someone important shows up, Jairus, who is an important synagogue official, but he is desperate. His young daughter is dying. As a Jew, he lives in a world of possibility where the world is open and real things can happen. And he comes to Jesus to ask for the healing of his daughter. In the next little while, some people come from his household and say that it's too late, that his daughter has died and he shouldn't bother the teacher anymore. Jesus overhears this and he says to Jairus, don't be afraid, just believe. Jesus somehow disperses or leaves behind the crowd, takes only three of his friends, Peter, James, and John. They go to the home of Jairus. The daughter, who's 12 years old, is there. Jesus tells the people that she is not dead, the mourners. Um, Jesus says that the child is not dead but asleep. Jesus goes to the child and says to her, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stands up and begins to walk around and the people were completely astonished. There's lots of important things in that story. Some are evident in the main facts and some are a little hidden, but Mark wants us to notice eventually. The little girl being 12 years old. 12 is not an accident. 12 is the number of belonging in the family of Israel, the 12 tribes. 12 is a pointer, a flag for us that we need to pay attention to. We also need to try to remember that when we're reading in scripture about individuals, we as 21st century Westerners may think the story is about individuals, and it might be, but the individuals belong always somewhere. So in this case, the daughter belongs to her family and her people. And in this case, she is an insider in an important synagogue family. And it matters what we're learning about her we might be learning about her family. We'll come back to Jairus and the little daughter. In the middle, there is a high stakes interruption. 
the crowd is pressing around Jesus. After Jairus has come and made his plea, we're told that the crowd is pressing around Jesus. And in the crowd is a woman who has had some kind of hemorrhaging, bleeding for 12 years. She is desperate in every way. She is unclean by the standards of Jewish religion. She is financially destitute. She has spent everything she has on doctors who not only did not help her, but made her worse. She is just the picture of desperation. She is also bold and unbelievably hopeful and audacious in her faith. She touches Jesus or Jesus' clothing and she knows in her body that she is healed and the bleeding has stopped. Jesus knows in his person that power has gone out from him. His disciples think it's ridiculous that he's trying to find out who, what happened, who touched him, who drew his, his healing from him. But he looks around and he's determined to find out who this is. And the woman steps forward, fearful and bold, and tells Jesus what happened. Jesus says to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. For this woman, the number 12 was like a curse. It defined her suffering. It was the length of time that she had suffered from her affliction. But she was also suffering in those 12 years, suffering by exclusion from the community. Um, the number 12 told her what she was not. The number 12 told her that she did not belong in the family of Israel, that she was shunned. Jesus speaks to her, tells, speaks to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. We need to remember that in Judaism, in Israelite faith, the voice is speaking the word. Um, and ultimately, the word is God's word at creation. And so even smaller words, human words, words of a teacher, words of a parent, make something happen. The word is creative. The word names and creates something. So when we have Jesus' words to the little girl, the little insider daughter, and now Jesus' word to the outsider whom he declares a daughter. Jesus' word is making something that wasn't there before. The disciples were ill at ease and, and it looked now like Jesus' apparent mistake was a real high stakes mistake, that his delay, his interruption had resulted in the death of Jairus' daughter, um, who he was supposed to be helping. The two stories, of course, are not isolated. The framed story and the hidden story bleed into each other and shed light on each other. And so once we've read the story about the outsider daughter, the daughter in the crowd, that was her place. And what we learn about her actually tells us about the crowd their destitution, their desperation, and their outsider status. Now when we come back to Jairus' daughter, we might see something new. We might see that Jairus and his daughter and the synagogue are showing us a religious system, a system of religious faith that was meant to be a healing system 
but which is near death itself. And so we have a beautiful story of the compassionate Jesus healing two individuals. But we see them connected. And if we look at the chronology, and Mark tends to be very deliberate about these things as a master storyteller, that perhaps the daughter of the synagogue, perhaps the system of the synagogue could not be healed until the outsider daughter was brought in. And perhaps the healing of the synagogue, the bringing back to life of the religious structure meant ending the system of outside and inside. Healing, transforming, bringing back from death the whole purity, shame, power structure that made some people insiders and some people outsiders. Of course, this is about the kingdom of God. Jesus came to proclaim and enact the way, the kingdom of God. Jesus allowed himself in the event of the cross to be treated as an outsider, to be crucified by Rome with their brutal means of execution, to be set outside the city in that execution, to in every way be treated as an outsider from the family of Israel. as a means of healing to restore God's people to life, but a different kind of life. It is this mission of healing that we are invited to be part of, to be healed, to become people who trust God as the healer, who know Jesus as the healer, and to become part of that, of Jesus' mission of healing the world, including religious structures, including the crowds, including the entire system that we as humans are prone to of insider-outsider divisions. And Jesus makes us children of the kingdom of God and gives us the mission to participate in healing.